we work on developing nanoparticle technologies for a variety of medical applications, including uh, development of next generation therapeutics or next generation imaging and diagnostic modalities. Um, our group and other groups use a variety of different biomaterials for developing these types of nanoparticles. Uh, materials made of uh, lipids and polymers are commonly used. Our focus is in the use of polymeric biomaterials for development of multifunctional nanoparticles. And the thrust of our work has been in developing nanoparticles that can be used for treatment of cancer and cardiovascular and other important human diseases. We have developed technologies whereby nanoparticles can encapsulate drugs and they can be functionalized in a way to differentiate disease tissue from normal tissue and therefore deliver their payload selectively to the cells of interest where the bulk of the administered drug is administered um, and delivered to the site where the therapeutic effect would be beneficial and then the same drug is kept largely away from other organs in the body where potential toxicities can arise. Our most advanced work is in the development of targeted nanoparticles that we have developed for treatment of a variety of solid tumors. That particular nanoparticle delivers a drug called docetaxel and targets a cancer antigen called the prostate-specific membrane antigen, which is expressed on the surface of prostate cancer cells, but it's also ubiquitously expressed uh, on the neovasculature of a variety of other solid tumors. Uh, those targeted nanoparticles are approaching clinical uh, translation in the second half of 2010. Other platforms that we have developed are targeted nanoparticles for treatment of cardiovascular disease or for treatment of uh, inflammatory diseases. Additionally, we have developed multifunctional nanoparticles that can actually act as next generation vaccines. For example, we've developed nanoparticles that can elicit both a humoral and a cellular immune response in a very selective way and get a very robust response against the target antigen without a generalized systemic inflammatory response that may be characteristics of some vaccines. In fact, adverse effects like malaise, muscle ache, which is commonly absorbed with vaccines, may be largely alleviated if you can focus the immune response to your target antigen and decrease the systemic inflammatory response and cytokine response largely uh, to a background level. And, and nanotechnology approaches that we have used to the development of vaccines uh, have enabled us to um, uh, advance a particular program toward clinical translation in mid-2011. The application of nanotechnology to medicine is very broad and can, um, can range from everywhere from therapeutic to diagnostic to imaging applications. And certainly nanotechnology can be a, an important enabler in a variety of research that is underway for medical use. With appropriate support, medicine is going to be an important beneficiary of nanotechnology. We've already begun to see the clinical benefit of the first generation nanotechnologies on human health. Drugs like Doxil have been in clinical practice since mid-1990s. With the advancement in the variety of nano platforms that have been developed over the past two or three decades, we are now beginning to see the second and third generation nanotechnologies advance toward late stage preclinical and early stage clinical development. These are very, very exciting times um, for nanotechnology and medicine.